Welcome to a realm where the pulse of sports thrills and the spark of technology sizzles. Join Ronald Unk Bolware and your charismatic host, Jay, a aka Jonathan Anderson. Together, they unpack the latest in sports and technology. This is Noonish Sports and Tech. Yes, sir. What's going down? What's going down, man? We are back for another very fun, awesome, favorite day of the week is Wednesday. Hello, how you doing? Episode of Noonish round here. What's going down, man? I'm very excited. I'm your host, J.A., a.k.a. Jonathan Anderson. Yes, we're going to get it in. And I'm here joined by my awesome co-host. It is, uh, you know, me, Mr. Ronald. Oh, oh, well, what's going down, huh? Oh, nothing much, man. Just uh, ready here. All the wins are my favorite day of the week. It ain't got nothing to do with no hope. Yeah, no, no, ain't got nothing to do with the hump. No, 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 we don't do all that over here. Hey, when you doing the hump, you back in 80, 89, 92, 93? Hey. Did you do the hump, the hump? Oh, oh, hey, I was the cowboy had two humps. <laughs> <laughs> you like you said, hump and hump, I ain't going to call it one time. I know that I had two jobs, yeah. so I had two hump days at the same day. Yeah. Hump and day, hump and hump in a day, hump yeah. and night. Oh, yeah. That don't sound right. I'm sorry, right? Hey, you know what it is. It was real, what it is. It was what it was, and I'm sure it was a good time. Yeah, I was. But uh, if you don't know, you're about to have a good time, man. Welcome to Notice. We're about to get this thing rocking, man. You know what time it is, man. It's time to go on and bring in the first lady F1. Let me get her up on this thing first before, uh, you know, bless, bless y'all. Before she blesses y'all with this uh, F1 session right now. You know, I can't do two things. I don't got to say it again. Y'all should know that by now. You know me. What's going down, C.Y.? How you doing, girl? So happy that you were here with us today on the show. Yeah. Live and in person. You know, that uh, that uh, tape delay you sent in uh, last time week, that was very nice. But uh, it's way better when you live, C.Y. Well, I guess we're not really in person. You guys, have, we've been in person, but this is the, this is as good as it can get from from a distance. Yeah, pre-recording stuff not as fun, not as fun. No, no one, no one to laugh at my jokes. No one to shoot money out of my head. You know. I mean, do you do you laugh at your own jokes though? You I sh I sure do. I sure do. Ooh, well, that counts. Can't say no one. You know, you can have one laugh, and if you look in the mirror, it's, it's almost two. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> What's going down? We got a lot moving in F1 this week, huh? Uh, thank the Lord, the good Lord. We are back with our second half of the season. It's a busy one, but we're back for the Dutch GP. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's Max's home race. You'll expect to see a lot of orange because fans get real rowdy. Uh, let me just do a rundown on who's last who's won the last three times uh, at this particular track. You ready? Yep. Max Verstappen in 2023. Mm -hmm. Max Verstappen in 2022. Max Verstappen in 2021. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if history uh, is going to predict the outcome here, I have a sneaking suspicion that, that Red Bull will be back on the top spot. But, but I feel like for this particular track and the, way it's shaped the tires that they're going to be releasing for this particular event i actually think mclaren has a pretty pretty killer shot at at uh, at winning this one they've been doing so well they've definitely got a dominant car their drivers are maybe a little bit less mature than somebody like lewis or max but paired with a fast car and a, a good track that's set up for them i see them being super competitive as well so i wouldn't be shocked if we see a mclaren red bull and a mercedes podium uh, you know, I was really rooting for Aston Martin to get up on a podium. I love, uh, you know, Fernando Alonso has previously had multiple podium appearances, but they've yet to make one this entire season. They've been scoring points, but you haven't seen Stroll or, or Alonso on on the podium. And I just, you know, wanted to shake it up. So I'm secretly rooting that we get one of those guys on the podium as well. So we'll see. It's um, It's going to be a fun race. There's not really a lot of news that's come out since the last time we we spoke. Um, there's actually a lot more on the creator the creator side of of F1 that we should certainly talk about. 
Um, but race wise, this is a track that took quite a bit of a break. It's historical. It's been around for many years, but there was a nice little gap there. I think about 20 years where they didn't actually race this track at all. So when they finally came back, Max Wayne won every every race since then. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm excited about it. I'm I'm ready well, to kick off Friday with track. I know, and I've been wrong. I've been wrong in some instances. I've been right. Um, you know, I think that uh, again, this has been a. I, as much as I, I kind of hate on Verstappen because he's always winning races and his history. I do think that this season has really shown how dynamic of a driver he is. It's more interesting to see him battle versus driving off and being ten seconds ahead of the nearest competitor. So I like it. I like these close calls. I like it for the sport. I think it's interesting to watch other people win as well. But I definitely think it's challenging, Max. And and that's how you become a better driver or a better athlete, right? Sure. To be challenged. So sure. it's um it's fun to watch that. So I think that if I'm if my suspicions are correct, unless something crazy happens, I do though expect those orange fans out there cheering on Red Bull to be very pleased and happy with the outcome of this race. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I also saw that you had some uh, some NASCAR news that you wanted to talk about. I, this, this past I do. I do. We've had some really crazy um, races the last uh, races since they took a little bit of an Olympic break. Um, they had about two weeks off. When they came back, they had that crazy finish that I mentioned last week where there was a crash right at the final lap and multiple overtime. So teams are stressed. Drivers are stressed. Austin Dillon goes to win it. Well, what happened this last weekend is kind of classic NASCAR. There was a rain delay, and it poses a question like, when are we going to pick tracks where there isn't guaranteed rain? They were in Michigan this last weekend, and Michigan, of all the tracks in NASCAR, has experienced the most amount of postponements or delays due to rain. And it just poses a question like, you always see the frustration that happens when the race doesn't get to get started. I mean, like, you guys remember the old Ranger Stadium when they would delay for rain? It never really was a long time. Like, you know, Texas, it could rain or blizzard at any moment. So they said, hey, because it's hot, there's rain issues. Let's get as many games in as possible. They built a new stadium. They've got it covering. You can't really do that for NASCAR. So yeah. all of the rain delays cause a lot of frustration with media. I mean, imagine being, hey, I'm going to have a commercial in the middle of the NASCAR race on, you know, TNT or NBC, and then it doesn't happen. So for this race, that exact situation, they tried to delay it as long as they could. Fans stayed as long as they could. But as you guys know, they really don't risk it with these particular sure. type of cars. There is no, they'll race an F1, but with the curvature of these tracks, the incline, um, the track material themselves, these tires, the speed of these cars going, and usually in this circular fashion, isn't really set up for driving on, in the rain. Yeah. So they don't risk it. So they push the race to Monday. And uh, Tyler Reddick from 2311, Michael Jordan's team, came in to, to win it. He uh, he did really well. It was a cool finish, but he just kind of posted that question. Like, what are we going to do? Should we go race in the desert only? It isn't going to be too hot. But there have been so many. I've been to uh, 50% of the races that I've been to have been rained out. So I used to think it was me that was the problem. But I think it's a NASCAR problem. <laughs> well, no, it's cool. Like, he's been having some pretty good success here recently, right? He won also won the, did he win the Chicago street race or was he just a part of the talk of the town because of his car, but he won yeah, another he, race recently. Yeah. He's been doing quite well. Um, they're a newer team and there's a lot of talk about how they've been successful, um, you know, over the last couple of seasons and competing with teams that have a lot more, um, you know, longevity or experience, if you will. And so it's cool. I, I like the dynamic. I actually got to meet some of the pit crew from that team. Um, fun, Fun fact, I got lost from my team when I went to go visit at Charlotte and couldn't find anybody, but I'm really short. And you guys don't know, I know I look like I'm 6'1", but I'm really, <laughs> I'm really uh, 5'3 on a day when there's not, some humanity. Not all the way, 6'4". But really not all the way. Uh, and I got, literally, I got lost from my team at the NASCAR race. And I'm standing like in pit road where there's a lot of people. The race is about to get started. So everyone's looking at the cars and talking to the drivers. There was a celebrity on track. I will not reference who he was, but he was causing a lot of issues. And I get lost. Like, I literally lose my team. There's no signal that whole weekend, another conspiracy. There was no Wi-Fi signal or internet the entire weekend. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, I'm a lost child. I'm, like, looking for my team. So the front left tire changer for 2311 
I'm like, excuse me, could you help me up onto the pit wall, which is about like three feet tall, but I was in a skirt. So I was like, I need a little, like, I need a lift. I need a boost. So he grabs me by my, my like elbows and lifts me up onto the pit wall so that I could see my family, not my family, my friends. <laughs> and I felt like I was like looking for my family, like a kid, but they were lovely. Like, they were so nice. They're like, yeah, pop up here. Like the exposure you get in NASCAR to the teams behind, the, like to the drivers themselves, to the cars. But then like, if you have a pit road pass, you can in the race be in basically the pit the pit stop with them you obviously can't touch the cars but you can get so close like what other sport can you be so like ingrained in yeah, um, so so did i love shout out to when they pick you up did they pick you up by your armpits just literally by my elbows like they just oh. he like picked me up onto the pit wall it was it's so nice because literally i couldn't get up by myself and i was like i can't find anybody so everyone's wearing hats i'm like my my team has a hat on he's like yeah so does everyone else like, damn. Uh, um, but I did feel like a lost child where I was like, oh, I can't did, you, did you at least describe the hat? <laughs> I was like, it's a NASCAR hat. And he was like, okay, that's not helping. I was like, it might be black. Not that's sure. So but fun. I did, I did find my team. Thank God. But uh, not, not without the help of the 2311 pit crew. Thank you guys so much. If you're watching, uh, you guys were lovely. Devin, I think he's the front left tryer changer. One of those. Uh, shout out to my guy for saving my life um, and for helping uh, helping Tyler win the race last weekend. Or I'm Monday. Be day. careful out there, man. You got to be careful. We don't need to need to have you putting your life in danger too much. Those NASCAR <laughs> races getting lost. You know, another, another, we, I have so many stories from all these races that I've attended. Um, and like, I will, really all of the sporting events I've, I've been at, I feel like I've always had like just something weird or bizarre happen to them. I don't like, is it me? Am I the problem? Maybe. But um, it sounds like you, uh, you're a voyager, you know, it's like, like you get out there a little bit and, you know, just have fun and, and, and I'm I can experience afraid. it though. If you just go to your seat, you're not getting the whole experience oh. of the event. You know what I'm saying? You will not catch me sitting in the VIP lounge waiting for things to happen. Like I love to be on the track itself. I like to be there. One of the races last year, actually exactly this year, um, this time last year in Daytona, there was a massive crash. And I was listening to Bubba Wallace's radio and they're literally because he's blind at one point because there's so much smoke and debris from the tires and the cars, everything was, there was fires happening, there's all kinds of things. And Bubba's literally blind driving and the spotters are sitting up at the top of the track, basically guiding him through the wreckage. Like, okay, a little bit left here, 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 like go around. Like, can you imagine? Yeah. Um, and they, they really are so important. So I, it's cool. I like to be deeply ingrained in, in the sport. And I just love the exposure that NASCAR offers to, to its fans. Formula one, although similar in structure, right? We're racing cars on a track just does not offer the same type of experience for a fan. Who's not Patrick Mahomes or a celebrity who gets to walk the grid. Um, so I just appreciate NASCAR's dedication to the fans and, and, opening up literally opening up the hood for them to check things out yeah and, and back to you know f1 i know it's been a, a bit of a break i know max has put in many hours in the video game cheating he probably knows the trash pretty well at this point you know he probably drives it in his sleep he, he could probably drive it in his sleep at this point um but back yes back to f1 now i told you guys really when this break kicked off is it leaves a lot of time for discussion team decisions are being made right like there's a lot of speculation that happens yeah. but one thing that f1 did during this break which i'm not really sure how to feel about it and thank god you don't have the name f1 in your title of your podcast because you would have received a cease and desist letter from formula one the actual entity of formula one last week i mentioned that there was some rebranding from world. One of my favorite podcasts rebranded. Their name was For the Girls, spelled like F one R. F one R the girls. Yeah. And there's a couple of other F one femme who I love to follow. There's a lot of creators who are in this space publishing exactly like what we're doing right here. They're talking about the sport. They're drawing eyes to it. They're getting unk who might not be excited about F one. We're getting unk excited. Like we're getting new fans involved. Yeah. We're educating them. Yep. Formula One sent out cease and desist letters to any creator that utilized the name in the title of their show or their handle. And I just feel like, may I permission to speak candidly, please? Please, as candidly as possible. I feel like it was a mistake. And I'll tell you why. I totally get the protective nature of a brand. I'm a CMO of a sports technology company. I understand licensing, media rights, logo rights. I understand those deals. 
But when you have a sport like F1 that is ripe for new fans, especially American fans, and tapping into the creator economy, like there are a ton of people who want to be on track interviewing, but they can't. So they're yeah. working from home. They're they're doing exactly what we're doing right here. Um, and they're promoting for free. F1's not writing any of these people checks. They're definitely not writing. Maybe they, maybe they should, guys. We're available. Um, they're not writing us checks, right? People are doing yeah. this purely because they're excited about it. One of the creators that I follow, she was talking about how Adam Silver has frequently been questioned about like, hey, what are you? what do you think about people always using NBA clips? And like, are you going to take everyone's pages down who uses NBA clips? And the gist of it was, it was like, it's kind of more exposure for the NBA. Like, Absolutely. we can't control everything. Who doesn't want free advertisement? Who doesn't want the world so, talking about them? Exactly. How many pages do we follow that utilize footage and clips and videos from from races or games or, you know, MLB? I mean, I just think of like John Boy Media. I don't know if you guys follow that page. Like it's nonstop clips and yeah. highlights and, you know, all of these companies are using it. So F1, I just feel like the timing of it was a little strange. It's like one part, hi, we want to be inclusive, include a lot of people. And the other part was like, hey, we're super protective of the brand. So I don't know. I totally understand being protective of the brand, but I just felt like the approach was just a little weird. And yes, I'm still trying to understand what they want to get out of it. Are they just trying to completely control the narrative, you know, control what content comes out with their name attached to it? Are they not as concerned with gaining the uh, American fan base? But I don't think that would be the case because why would you do a whole series on Netflix? You know, right. So yeah, I think I don't, they, I don't understand I the strategy here. I think they want the control. I think they're also, they're, you know, they're a legacy brand. They've been around for a long time. Um, I think they're, you know, when we look at who's being super progressive in the league space, I always really look to the NBA and the WNBA as leaders. Everyone else will follow. Um, I work closely with a lot of these leagues, and I'm super impressed on the investment to really drive more eyes to the to the sport but you know what i don't know i don't know what formula one's thinking i think it's not going to keep people from tuning into the sport but maybe it might slow down the creator's investment in in driving these storylines and sending people to to watch and listen exactly what i'm doing here if i'm if my handle was not christiana yeber and it was like f1 dallas babe or whatever i don't <laughs> that was a horrible name but you know what i mean like if it was something it's, great name. it's f1 <laughs> dallas dallas plural dallas babe um or the noonish f1 segment yeah. we'd be in trouble right now and i just Man. feel like what does it really matter you know we're still pumping out good messages we want people to watch the race please tune in on sunday but it's a really interesting i don't know there's a lot of conversation that's going to come out about it um and uh you know they get a lot they get huge checks for their sponsorship so i think you know somebody who's got a thousand i saw a creator who has a thousand followers on tiktok and she said that she got a letter from them to remove her handle and i'm like so I don't know if they're cracking down. They're probably utilizing AI to track things. And um, I don't know. I, on one hand, applaud them for they're protecting their brand equity. But the other part is like, come on, you know, like it's it's already it's tough out there as is. Like, let, let a girl have her F1 block. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, I don't see a problem with it. I, I think that they would uh, want you to promote them. Right. Right. You think they're like being picky, like in choosing which people they allow uh, I don't, I don't think so. I think that would be a really bad look. They were like p cherry picking who got to use it and not. I think they're making a statement by saying nobody can. And I get that. I do. I totally get it. I get it from the brand side. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I've seen followers. I mean, creators with followings that are less than a thousand. And then I've seen some who've got 50,000 plus. I think what's really interesting is some of the girls like the Paddock Project, they were invited to races. They actually got in front of them and i wonder if that didn't speed up them being targeted to to maybe rebrand now they haven't talked about it publicly i'm just speculating that that's why they changed it just based on others but it's kind of crazy like the more exposure you get to f1 the more you have to probably partake in their their rules and follow their guidelines so yeah. i don't know we'll see what we'll see what happens um the dutch gp is a really nice kick kick off to the rest of the season uh, again, Max is not totally uh, guaranteed to win the driver or constructor championship yet, but there's some good odds that he will. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yep. Right on. Right on. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's been a nice little break and 
happy to have you back in action going in right now for the uh, Nunes team, you know, and, and and giving us this awesome report and keeping us up to speed. <laughs> ooh, that's, oh, nice. ooh, that's a F1. good one. Up to Sports. speed on F1. <laughs> Pretty, yeah, let me yeah. hold on. Let me uh, let me write that down. Uh, let's send anybody else out there looking. You know, going to take them green arm out. You know. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Now, I, now I'm like, should I have F1 in my fantasy football name? Are they going to come for me on the noonish fantasy football team? I don't know. I See? don't. You could, you could be tricky. You could start it with F and end it with one, and we could all know what was going on there. You don't necessarily have to have them. You know. F1 Dallas Babe. That's going to be my name. So. Thank you, guys. I can't wait to uh, to catch up next week and give you the results of the race. I'm really excited. Uh, awesome. Finally have an F1 weekend. Yep, we're excited as well and looking forward to it, Miss Christiana. Yeah, you have a great week. And uh, everybody take a bow and, and give a round of applause to the first lady of F1, you know. No, nah, it's good to see you, though. Girl. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. We'll see Thank you next so week. Much. I'll be watching. Bye, guys. That's the first lady of F1 right there. Shout out, first of all, shout out Mark Clayton. I did want to mention this, man. You see the shirt I have on right now, Live Audio. Uh, last night, Mark had an a awesome, awesome, uh, awesome event, man, uh, with the release of his new headphones, uh, the Live brand. Uh, it's an ergonomic uh, headset, man. A beautiful, beautiful headset. Uh, fits well. It's made for, you know, athletes. He said, you know, one of his things he mentioned was uh, he got tired of, you know, when he had to do that comeback route or, or a hook route, you know, when he hit that player foot and come back, his headphones would fall forward, you know, right. and, and slip off his head. And just different activities that he did with the headphones, no matter what brand it was, uh, it, it just wouldn't stay up. So uh, he decided to, to, to create one. The, uh, the, that would allow him to move, you know, uh, and and do what he has to do uh, in his uh, profession, and, and listen to music while he's doing it. You know, I listen to music all the time when I'm working out. Matter of fact, I've gone, I've left the gym to go back and get my headphones when I left them. But you now it's very dope, man. I'm super proud, proud of Mark, man, and, and what he's doing uh, with Live Brand, and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing a, a lot more people with the oh, headphones yeah. on there. On the heads in the future, man. Dope, dope design, dope design. It's the sexiest headphone around. <laughs> and that's Live, L-I-V-V, audio. Boom, check them out. You'll see it. Uh, they'll be releasing uh, the first, uh, I guess the first uh, rendition, the first uh, uh, MVP, yeah. right? Um, uh, this uh, December, right before Christmas. But yeah, man, coming out the gates. Dallas Cowboys news, baby. Let's get it, man. So, you know, we got a first off, CD Lamb. You know, I guess let's talk about the game first. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the game this past weekend. Uh, I think we got a pretty good kicker. I don't know what you think. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brandon Aubrey. Yeah. My boy went out here and hit a 66 yarder uh, like it was nothing. That would have been a record, but all it was in. Well, it's it, it is a record right now. Oh, I'm gonna Justin this one. Tucker, Justin Tucker, or Jason Tucker? Uh, is it Justin Tucker? One of the two. Yeah, anyway, up in uh, Baltimore, he had a 66 yard last year. But I'm talking a lot of wind, all kinds of elements. Yeah, but yeah, he hit his in regular season, right? Yeah, it's so, a regular season. So, so I don't know if can you set the record or tie it in preseason? I don't know. That's a great question. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not so. sure. I'm not sure. But a great question. Yeah. What, did he set the record the other night? I don't know. I don't know. Did he tie? I don't know. I don't well, know. we'll find that out by next week. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to research that right now. Nah, man. Nah, man. Nah. Uh, it, it was uh, pretty awesome to to, to see him. No, it was, no, just to see him, you know. But he, he, he was kicking along last year, so. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of like, because uh, last year he tried one from 60-something, but he missed it, I think. Yeah, but I mean, he, I think he made, you know, 62 or 63. Yeah, like, I mean, the man got a boot on, oh, man. You know, I was very that. accurate as well. So yeah. uh, I'm happy that he's our kicker. Yeah. You know, I must say that first and foremost. Oh, yeah. Uh, Me we, too. You know, we, we, we lucked out, man. Punters and kickers, two positions we definitely, well, we need to punt him more than the kicker because we, uh, you know, with that new kickoff rule. Well, you know, you know they, get that and, you know, we get a ball up so much, we definitely got to. Play the field position role, you know, because yeah. we give it back so often. But um, anyway, Justin Tucker, McCown, appreciate you, big dog. You can see his clearly, bro. 
Let us know. Says, I can see you clearly now, man. Yes, oh, appreciate it. Can you hear us? How do we sound? Hey, now that the rain is gone, do, do it sound right? Shout out, Mr. McCown. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, talking man. you in the building, man. Appreciate you talking you ish. That's what we're here for, man. That's what we come to do. And we will acknowledge you if you come in the building and talk you ish with us. Like, straight up, man. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, man, so... Uh, you know, the, uh, a very, uh, you know, we got to win against the Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders, that is. Uh, a, a nice little, uh, you know, 27 to 12 victory, right? Defense looks like they're figuring some stuff out. Defense has been very impressive this, this offseason or this preseason. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, but you know, preseason, uh, can't put much into. Yeah, not getting real. I mean, but you know, uh, preseason is, you know, I look to see is in the, in the young guys, uh, Standing out, yeah, and man, and the, and the most ones that stood out over these last, both of the last two games, it's been some of the defensive back. Play. Absolutely, the yeah. defensive backs for sure. And this is the funny thing, you know, the guy Hall, the yep. other the ball man for the touchdown. Yeah, you know, he played for North Texas State, right? No, and he intercepted Stephen Jones for Arkansas. <laughs> that was his last interception for a touchdown. Wow. Was against Jerry Jones, right? So yeah, that's how I knew about him. Yeah, like, yeah. we gotta look at this kid. Yeah, he I just it. saw it with my own eyes. Yeah, he picked it out. Yeah, and, uh, North Texas, he's from North Texas State, and they played Arkansas. He picked out Steve yeah, Jones. Uh, North too. Texas up in did Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. it did. Plus, you know, he gave up that long ball early. But other than that, you know, both both games and, and like I said, the secondary has looked good and anything else. And uh, you know, and uh, Overshaw made a. Uh, I don't did he play the other night, but I know the first yeah, game. Yeah, he played. He uh, played. But the first game I didn't watch much of the uh, uh, of that second game, but the first game, Overshaw, you know, made a couple of flashes into the backfield and made the tackle. And that's what we're gonna need him to do in the regular season. Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? One nine. Nineteen. Trey Lance. Oh yeah. Played much better this week, man. You know, again, I'm not looking at the results like a lot of people look. I'm looking at mechanics. Uh, I'm looking at his ability to run the offense properly, keep the keep it moving yeah. forward. Um, he he got a, you know t- two touchdowns, one running and one passing the other day yeah. uh, on Saturday. Of course, it's preseason again, basic defense. But what's astounding about him? He had less than 400 passes. Like he had 300 and some passes in in college. Yeah, you know, he's got less than 500 passes on his arm. Less than five hundred in his career. That's why no, out of high school. That's why the the question mark is so big on it. You know, I mean, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, but but what I've seen in those throws is very impressive. Well, like the kid's an impressive athlete. He's got a good arm. Like, hey, I would, I want. That's how I want to start. Like in baseball, I'm used to that. In base, in baseball, you go get a 16, 17 year old kid that hadn't got any pro college at bats at all. And you teach that kid the right way from the start. Yeah. 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 That that's how it goes. Oh yeah, I'm not saying that. You know, you instruct them from the start and they only know now they only have this system. Only know this way to do these things. And you know, it was um I think COVID has something to do with that, right? That COVID year has something to, as far as Trey Lance is concerned. Uh, you know, with no, with everything yeah. basically shut down or whatever. I think yeah, they played yeah. one season, and they played that spring, and he sat that one out, and then got drafted. I believe that's yeah, something like that, something real strange. But yeah. yeah, man. So you know, I hey, y'all know how I feel about it. I ain't trying to beat a dead horse, you know. Yeah. Like I believe it's time. You know, maybe maybe six, seven games into it, four to, four to eight games into it, hand the reins over. Is all I'm saying because you know we know what we're gonna get out of the other guy. Yeah. But uh, but no, man. You know, very very excited, man, to to get this football season cranked up. And uh, there's definitely one guy. And before we get to that, I don't know if you saw that old Randy Gregory got released. Was released by Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Good. Now I mean, I mean, like, what what would you would you bring him back to Dallas? No. Why no. Not? Why not? He played good here. He was a, he was an impactful player for the Cowboys, which led him to getting that massive contract in Denver. Right. Okay. I'm just and, and then he played well for San Francisco last year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, I mean, he's part of the reason why they got to where they got. That you know, he did his job, opposite of uh, Bosa and also Chase Young. You know, they went and stacked that D line up, and San Francisco did very well. He played well for those guys. You wouldn't take a chance on bringing him in. No. Bad locker room guy. Like, what do you think? 
we just need to move on from some of these uh, from some of these retreats, man. We need we need fresh blood. We need some we need not, we don't need some guys that's okay, pretty good. We need some dogs in here. We don't you don't consider that to be friends, you know, veteran talent. I felt like he was a dog. Once they let him get his you know, get his green. You know what I'm saying? Get his medication. Yeah, I wouldn't bring him back. Me. You ask me. Yeah, I would stand no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring him back. I want some fresh guys, yeah. you know, to come in and do something with a winning attitude. Yeah. Because, you know, Randall Gregory, he did good with those guys. But, you know, it, I'm just ready to move on from a lot of Cowboys. Oh, yeah. You know, like I say, there's some of them that, that uh, got traded and so for, for a different reason. And like I say, I'm not wishing anybody... I want everybody to have a long and lustrous career, but just not with the Cowboys. Yeah, no doubt. Because they didn't have their chance, and they didn't do a lot but to me you know, when they was there. It was a performance that he didn't, got cut for and or released. It wasn't because of a performance. No, 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 no. He didn't show up to anything. He didn't show up. Yeah, absolutely. They, you know, like, like you said, like the coach said, you can't miss what you never had. He never showed up to anything. Yeah. Didn't show up to mini camp, training camp. No, I mean, you know, they didn't know how, how, how hard it is. Well, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. I'm done with you. You know, so, you know, you did that here. You didn't do that there. You might get here and do, I mean, what? why you treat me different than you did to other people? Because at, at those other teams, he showed up. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got C.D. Lamb, too. Yeah. So, you know, like. Yeah. But, yeah, he showed up at other spot. He yeah. showed up for us. But you're you talking about Tampa Bay, he didn't show up at all. Yeah. He obviously right. didn't want to be there. Okay. Okay, but and, you know, and and then if I, you play so good for San Francisco, you still be there. I mean, I got a lot of. I mean, that's just me. That's just how I think. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's just how I think. You know, they give and take. Yeah, you know, were they willing to deal with the things that came that that, that Randy Gregory comes with? Yeah, you know that's what I'm saying. saying. I'm not willing to deal with that anymore. I deal with the that off field, and yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to deal with that again. You're not doing it again. No, no, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't even consider breaking. So, so you know what that looked like already is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I feel you on this. Yeah, so you know I wouldn't bring it back now. Nah. Yeah, now I feel you on that as well. You know, and that's that's that tiger. Yeah, that, that tiger stripes ain't changing. Is what you're saying. Yeah, it's hard for that, hard for that to happen. So I, I'm questioning the day, right? At a decade, of the year, the month, whatever, the season. What what you think about the CD man? Or is it CD to strip? They both be they both may be tripping a little bit. You think you think you think he's tripping? Thirty five thirty five million. Hey, when you got Dak throwing to you, you need to get as much as you can because you might not play no. And I'm not about little throwing to you, you know, you better get what you can, but not, but you can't be ridiculous with it. I mean, that's not I mean the the but we talk about the market. Okay. And C D was by the numbers, one of the top receivers in the league last year. Yeah, absolutely. He had the most yards. I don't know. If Justin had... Jefferson came out and said it himself. C.D. Lamb is a better receiver than me. Well, that's a new breed of athlete right there to come out and say people better than them. I mean, I would have never man. said it. I wouldn't either, but I would have never said it. I'm just speaking of what he said. All I, I mean, is C.D. better than him for one year or C.D. better than him for eight years? C.D. can't throw to himself. And C.D. only been in there for what? This is the fourth season coming up on this fourth season. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I mean so that's 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 part of my right. CD, Justin Jefferson have done this how long? Eight nine years, and then mm -hmm. now, I mean, mean, you know, and then it's the first thing. I'm the type. I'm the type player like this here. If I play with Justin Jefferson and he came out and said CD was better than him, I only want to play. I, I'll tell him to his face. Say, oh boy, I only want to play with you no more, man. You know. Man, we having some little technical difficulties. I don't, I don't know if uh, y'all can see us or what, man. But uh, let me see if I can jump on YouTube right quick and see what's going on. There we are. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah. What happened there for a second, but tell you what. I mean, yeah. Tired yeah. Tired of the quadri ish, my L. Going on around here, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. So you know, CD is just yeah. That's what that's how no, okay, we, we yeah. back now. Okay, yeah. But yeah, CD is uh you know that's a very polarizing topic right now. 
And Lottery was like, man, and this one thing, especially after Dak getting that 160. Like, CD deserves, when Dak became the highest paid, it did, like, CD has done a lot more in this short amount of time than Dak has. Like, that actually mattered to me. This is my opinion right now, okay? And, uh, you know, I just, I, he's going to get his money. Oh, yeah. I don't think good. Jerry's tripping. Like, he, CD don't need to be in training camp right now. You know, he knows the, he knows the offense. He uh, doesn't get his little time in there with Dak, though. They need to. I mean, I, I mean, why would Dak hold the ball? Uh, like it don't matter. Dak holds the ball too long. It ain't no time to run for Dak. We are not really discussing that right now. I don't know how CD got sixteen hundred yards. He led the league, and I, I know he had the most yak. That's he it. Didn't have that many. He didn't have that much yak. He had four That's five. That. He had four or five hundred. But but the other first twelve hundred, Dak throwed it to him. He about to ran four or five hundred. Mm-hmm. But but also. Tyreek Hill had a lot of yak, too. He was right behind it. Absolutely. Nobody was talking about Tua. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking just strictly about money. And me we'll personally. Talk about Tua later. So, yeah, <laughs> me personally, me personally, I would not give C.D. Lamb $35 million. I would not. I would. And I would not give that. That's the market. Huh? That's the market, and he's proven to be a top receiver. And C.D. has been cold since college, since before college. See, even we don't, we don't, we don't care. Time. I don't care what you did in college. Well, in the so front, you been that dude. Yeah, he played it one year. One year. I mean, he only played three. I, I mean, I, 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 and I, he can't I mean, throw to himself again. You know, I'm not worried, you know, worried, you know, I had, nobody can throw to themselves. Exactly. I mean, you know, you got guys, it, it, you got guys with 13, 14,000 yards. We, we are not going to discuss that. Kirk, that Cousins, that, Kirk Cousins was throwing accurately to Justin Jefferson, giving him the ball in stride. Exactly. Jamar Chase, uh, Jamar, uh, Jamar we're, Chase we're not talking about had Joe right Burrow now. throwing the ball we're accurately talking. to him, we're giving him the ball in stride, hitting him on deep balls. Okay. Yeah, I can name uh, Tom Rick Hill said that uh, Tua is a more accurate quarterback than Pat Mahomes. He's getting hit with the ball in stride. Exactly. Oh, oh every route in the in the route tree. Can't say the same for CD. All I can say is this. Both that, routes and all, all I can say is this. That the, that the numbers don't say that. People mouth say that. I, I, I'm the tape that. says that. Okay. The tape says that. Okay, but the evidence though. The tape is the evidence. Okay, but at the but at the end of the day, Dak had the most passing yards and the most touchdowns last year. Regardless of how he got it, he got it, and and and, and to diminish New York and Washington players by saying he played against South. That's the way we do when we want to make somebody's what time. What were records last year? They I, won some games. That's what I think. And they on. didn't beat Dallas. Let me say it like that. Dak's so sorry, but they didn't beat Dallas. But anyway, they probably that's beat a each other. They probably that's a whole other. other. Well, they had more than now. They can't beat each other because they had more than two victories. But anyway, that's another subject. Let's talk about the subject. Not many more. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Not many more. Yeah, know? that's a that, that's a whole other hey. subject. But anyway, you know, uh, so like you, you asked me, I wouldn't get CD no thirty five million dollars. Me personally, you wouldn't bring Randy Gregory back neither. No. Man. And I wouldn't get that. You, no. you right there with Jerry right now. You just yeah, absolutely. Shit. Because because this is the thing. Jerry Jones, Dallas. Jerry's going to sign seating. He, he might. But the, but the most important thing to Jerry has already been accomplished. Dallas is the most expensive franchise, oh, yeah. sports franchise in the world. He's so all for that CD already. and Dak, all that. All that's low on Jerry. That's not as high on Jerry the priority list as people think it is. I know that. Look, I mean, especially that. I think CD is more so because see, he's come back and retracted from some things that he said, you know. And oh, yeah. but Jerry Jones plays with the media like that. Like, you know, remember, remember the Zeke who shirts when Zeke was going through his contract negotiations before they gave him a hundred million? Zeke who? Yeah, Zeke who? You know, Jerry do that. Like that's what Jerry does. You know, yeah, like, and do you know what that does? That yeah. keeps the people talking about the keep those people Cowboys. go, and that's what Jerry won't. People to talk about the Cowboys, Absolutely. look at the Cowboys, Absolutely. spend money on the Cowboys. And, and, as, and as long as people are, see, because like I said last week, the Cowboys may be losing, but Jerry is winning. Jerry's winning every time, and he's going to continue to win every time. Yeah, because Jerry's more than me. So, That's what Jerry's going so, to you know, all that, All that back and forth about money, what I think, and I'm yep. saying, you know, this whole thing, Jerry winning why the Cowboys. And Jerry just wants you watching. Oh yeah, you know? exactly. And that's what he got people and, going. And, and that's why that's why Jerry and Stephen A have become such good friends. Oh yeah, over time because Stephen Steve A and the Cowboys I'm, almost every day doing basketball season, baseball season, the Olympics, and everything. He's gonna bring up the Cowboys. Yeah, and he's gonna keep the Cowboys relevant with the media. So Jerry loves Stephen A. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry loves Stephen. Oh yeah, and that's a, that's a, that ain't even a love hate relationship. No, that's, that's a that's a love love relationship. 
Because Stephen A is part of the reason why we up to 10 billion. Because he's keeping us running on. Talking about, because it ain't the winning. It ain't the winning culture that Jerry has uh, uh, cultivated around the Dallas, you know, cowboy environment and around Frisco. Like, that ain't why. It's because the media keeps us front and center. And if you control the narrative, not not only the, the media, the fans. Oh, absolutely! By 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 buying more Dallas Cowboy paraphernalia than any other team. Even right now, I think I could be wrong, but Dallas Cowboy, you, you got thirty-two teams, and the Cowboys are selling eighteen percent. Yeah, the NFL paraphernalia. And at one point, it was as high as thirty-three percent. Wow! And it, and now it's gone down because they added more teams. Dallas is selling eighteen percent of the NFL paraphernalia, right? That's about that's about as how many uh that's I think that's the same percentage as Tom Brady's Super Bowl wins. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so yeah. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot. So so that's what Jerry's worried about. You know, C D Dag, all that. That's for that's for the fans and the yep. podcasts and the talk shows and the sports castles. Yep. But Jerry has already done his thing by getting Dallas up to that ten billion. Yeah, no doubt. And okay. now working on getting them to let them be. Man, Jerry is uh, Jerry, you know. he's he's great at what he does, and can't nobody argue with that, man. So uh, we'll keep this train rolling because we got a lot to talk about today. So we'll go to the NFL news, man. And uh, let me see here. Let me turn. Let me turn some of this down. I'm making the I'm making the machine run a little slower because I got so much open in front of me yeah. right now. So let me just gonna close that out. You know. So we can do what it do the right way. So, uh, move it on. Like I mentioned. Uh, first, we'll start with Tua, man. What, what you think about this whole Tua situation coming out, basically saying that, you know, he, he's able to play much better now because he has a positive uh, influence around him right now. You know, said Brian Flores was just dogging him out every day he woke up, telling me how much he sucked. He didn't belong there. Like, I can be a coach and expect somebody to win. Where in that always. That's not the first thing Brian Flores has, has done. His, his, his name has been attached to a couple of negative things. I can't recall what they are. Yeah. But and then I think everybody kind of knew him and Tua didn't get along. Oh, yeah. He didn't want to. He didn't and want to do to him. Yeah, and that's why Brian I mean, see is, is gone and Tua is still down. Mm-hmm. You know, and, yeah. you know, that, you know, and, and, and he, most of this stuff, this is, this is, this is, this is just what I believe because all of the situations that I have ever, been in, it's, and, and I believe when you get to a certain level, it's not that much difference in the players, it's the environment and the culture. Yeah. Because these athletes are within 3 to 5% as good as the, the worst quarterback in the NFL to me is is within 3 to 5% of the best one. It's just that his environment and who he's playing with and his coaching, uh, that's the other part that makes them better. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's just my opinion. You ain't no fact. That's, that's, that's the development. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and understanding yeah. Uh, communication is what's heard, not what's said. Yeah, yeah. But so you can you can say something until you blew to the in the face to somebody, but if they're not receiving your message, it's pointless. Yeah, because this is the thing. You have to fall into the right situation because there's a lot of NFL coaches wouldn't even let Patrick Mahomes do all that. Running, falling down. That behind the back pass Saturday. Well, see, well, Incredible. See, well, see, now Patrick Mahone has done so many uh, playground plays. Yeah. And won three Super Bowls. Yep. Whatever he do, you can't tell him no now. Yeah. You can't and, tell him and, no. At this point, yeah. You can't tell Especially him. when he completes yeah. the pass. Yeah, So, so. My now, boy threw it behind his back. Uh-huh. Yeah, so when he completed the pass behind his back and he got three Super Bowls, can, can Andrew Lee tell us, say, man, don't do that. But I completed it. And I got three Super Bowl. What you talking about, Andy? Yeah. But now, see, but Tua coming in as a rookie, yeah. coach over him, he can't, uh, he has an established, he has one nothing. He's looking up to this dude as a, as a, as a, a mentor, like the, you can head coach him. And then it's, uh, and then it's, yeah, it's hungry for your knowledge and information. And then his coach is restricting him instead of blossoming him. Yeah. You know, let, letting him blossom. He's not watering that seed. He's yeah. drying them out. Yeah, yeah, he's so. So that makes a lot of difference. That's wild, man. And like, to see Brian Flores come up yesterday and, and trying to talk about, this is like, bro, like, you should have known. You don't, you don't do that to a kid. That whole, you know, you don't get on the Dolphins, but it's been a whole lot of crazy. You don't do that to anybody on any level if you want to get something out of it. If you want to get something positive out of it. Like, nah, that's not, that's not, 
there's nothing positive coming out of that that action right there. You know, uh, for every action, there's a reaction. There's nothing positive coming out of beating somebody up, beating somebody down every day, every day, and every then day. So, you you feed negativity into them and expect positivity to to come out of it. That don't work. I hope my Flores, he's a he's a solid coach. I hope he gets another opportunity, but I hope he is taking this lesson and learn. I hope he's learned his lesson. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Learn. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That ain't cool. That I ain't cool. I don't yeah. know. Boy, they do that at. <laughs> but uh but yeah, that Patrick Mahomes pass was crazy. He said that he didn't even he didn't even play in that. No. I believe that. He said that he was he was mad at Travis Kelsey for running the wrong route. And uh, threw it behind his back. Literally, you know, it was going to be a complete pass, and, and everybody's talking about it, you know. He said he forgot about the play because he was mad. The catch ran the wrong route. <laughs> he said somebody was like, did you know it? He's like, you know, he's like, what are you talking about when they asked him? And then he was like, oh, yeah. He, but now he felt, because people were coming out like, bro, you just throw a ball behind your back in football, bro. We saw LeBron knew the Olympics on the court, but we seen Magic Johnson and all kinds of people. We didn't know to see a quarterback throw a ball behind their back, man. Patrick Mahomes is special. Yeah. The only place I've seen that somebody do that, you know where I see somebody do it at? At the park. At the park on the playground. Yep. Yeah, and and they and it's certain coaches, the way Patrick Mahomes played, back in the day would say, you're a playground player. Yeah. So you uh, come come sit by me. Yep. You know, straight up. Yeah, so, so it's all about where you at, your teammates, your your surroundings and all that's got a lot yep. to do with how how good your career go. Absolutely, everything to do with it, man. Yeah. I was watching a uh, interview with my boy Mike early, and he was talking about his upbringing and how you know he always wanted to be a coach because the coaches around him were such impactful influences on him. You know what I'm saying? And that yeah. you know, he had very often from my, like even as a kid growing up, he wanted to coach over playing. No, yeah. he had you know he, he's got records still in Central Arkansas. I had the opportunity to play, but wanted to coach. So he followed that coaching path versus rehabbing his knees and doing everything else that he could do to get to the league and spend that time there. Real coach. Very smart decision, man. Very smart decision, yeah. man. But uh, did you see Stephon Gilmore? He also uh, signed with the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know. Uh, he was good for us now. Yeah, I just poop on the man now. No, I can't. I can't. But, but this is the whole thing that I'm concerned. That uh, bothers uh, us about the Cowboys now. He did very well for about First part three, 14 guys. Yeah. The last two or three? Oh, no. Not so much. Every I time. mean, and he was hurt, and I and I understand that. But I was yeah. saying, that's my exhaustion with the Cowboys. Yeah. They'll play good for 12, 13 games. Then, I mean, so that has nothing to do with them, but I'm just exhausted with the Cowboys doing that. Yeah. And then you come in, and you play good at first, and then you do the same thing. So, yeah, I hope you play real good for where you go, Minnesota? Uh, yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. I hope you play. Because I hope he plays good for Minnesota as he did for us. You know, because uh, cause those uh, I'm listening to you, the headphone. Uh, uh, because those those first games, he the first about twelve games, he was locking a lot of stuff down, and I appreciated him. But then you know he you know he kind of fooled the hammy, and then some things started happening with him, and now and and I was just like, well, here we go. Yeah, you know Minnesota just had that that rookie that passed away. Yeah, you know, and uh, I'm sure that came from that. You know, he might not have had that opportunity had that not happened. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, with uh, with uh, Bland and Diggs and the young guys we got, you know, I'm not saying none of those are are as good as Gilmore, but I'm saying with, with Gilmore on the field, they won't have a chance to develop. Yeah. So I yeah. think it's more uh, it's more conducive for us to let him go. Yeah. Put the young yeah. guys in there, and if we go, you know, and if and if Bland gonna give up two or three touchdowns, that's okay. Cause yeah. people want to go to the house. Yeah, you leave them alone then. Yeah. Oh, you know we. I think we need the right thing by trying to develop our young guys. Oh, no doubt about it. No more. doubt about I, it. Cause I like you more, so yeah. I'm not gonna say a lot. I'm not gonna. And, say and we got some more young talent in there this year. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, uh, the the rookies. So yeah, you know it's uh it, we're we're deep at DP, and I like what Mike uh, Mike Zimmer is doing with our defense. You oh know? yeah, I, I prefer a four three over three four. He had a week. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. If you got to have a big, strong, a big, fat, strong nose guard. You must have been reading my mind. If you if you run a, a three ball, first thing you hit, and you got to have some beats. You got to have Billy Wilport. You got to hold it down in the middle of that line. Tony Sarah Goosa. Tony Sarah Goosa, yeah. Somebody like that. 
You gotta have a big, nasty and, behemoth, and and then you gotta have some fast of a man. You gotta, <laughs> and we can have that. They got some tough linebackers, man. Yeah. And you gotta, they gotta be mobile, and they gotta be because when you play a three-four, your outside linebacker is really a slash D end. Yeah, slash kind. I mean, in certain situations, yeah, because it cause your D end slide over, and then he get on the outside of him. So. You know, you gotta have some real tough linebackers. Yeah, absolutely, man. You gotta have some gotta have some weight on. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how we how how Mike Zimmer plays with Mike Parsons. Okay, well, then, 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 then I think that just overall, so far as defense, I'm just say coaching period. I think Mike Zimmer is a, is a, can coach circles around Dan Quinn because huh. mm-hmm. I never saw that. You know, when Dan Quinn's scheme was working, it was beautiful. Yeah. But when it was, wasn't was working, it was ugly as I Oh, yeah, absolutely. And oh my every God. time we played Mike Shanahan, he ate him for lunch. When he, when we came up against Green Bay, ate him for lunch. Yeah. You know, because you could find those zone. There's a way to beat any zone. Ain't no zone yeah. uh, uh, unbeatable, like straight up. Well, you know, Mike Zimmer's a big zone guy. Too. And he would. With the run, with the, I feel much better about it in a 4 3 than I do a 3 4. Yeah, yeah. At least I know you're going to be able to contain the edges. I know you, you should be able to put a little, get a little pressure on the, on the quarterback with four guys, maybe five. And I'll say this I even think Mike Zimmer is a better evaluator of talent than uh, uh, Dan Quinn. You say he recognized the talent? Uh, I said, yeah, recognized talent better than Dan oh, Quinn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then when he see the talent, he know what to do with it. He, he, and that's the thing. Recognizing your talent and then understanding where well, they fit. Oh well, see, that's the only yeah, putting them in the right position. That's what I was saying. Put them in the right position because this is the thing. Anybody could just recognize. I mean, when I say recognize yeah. talent, I'm talking about recognize what to do yeah. with the talent. Yeah, because anybody know you six four, you you two forty, you run a four four, oh, you, you talented. I yeah. mean, but but now what to do with that talent? That's when. You know, and, and I just saw yeah, like, Do you know what? Do you know what they need to be in order for, for them to yeah, uh, absolutely to exceed their expectations and meet their potential, or you know, you're gonna use the part that flashed out to you and then let them die off everywhere else? Oh yeah, basically what they did with my One thing that got me with our uh, Dan Quinn that I seen, I seen Dallas with five five DBs and the other team with two tight ends. I saw that too many times. I was shooting those back in the field, huh? Oh, 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 who was that? Say I got an echo. It's on both mic. Sounds better. I wasn't camp. I seen you check the phone. It's a little bouncy, but audio's better. How, how we sounding right now, Trip? You still out there, bro? Yeah, man. Yeah, nah, man. That's what I'm talking about, Trip. Hey, Trip. I want you to be in our fantasy football league, bro. You know, uh, shoot me. I'm gonna put my email in there. Shoot me your, uh, your email address, bro, and I'm going to see your fantasy football uh, league, bro, so, so you can get down to the league with us this year, bro. Because you're a real one, bro, and I definitely appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I'm putting my, my email address down below in the chat. And I'm going to mention this anyway. We are inviting a few lucky sub- subscribers to, to join us in the fantasy football league this year, man. And trip to go with you. Trip to go with you definitely in this thing, bro. You in that thing, big dog. But uh, he said still a little echoing a little bit. Wait a minute, let me turn mine. Let me see. Oh, I'm on the wrong setting right here. Right, let me see. That might be a little better. Let me check. Let me check. Just add them jobs. I put them down. You give them back? Yeah, I gave them back to you. You gave them back to me. Yeah, but uh, trip to go, we we really appreciate that, man. That was, you know, man, we get out like that. And, uh, he said, "Oh, oh, yeah, that's uh, yeah." He said, "That might be little echo." That might be it. Mine, mine, might. No, I had, I know, I had mine on the wrong setting for sure. I I had mine on the wrong setting, so we'll see where we're at. Let me let me let me get this up to speed. Testing, testing. Mic check, mic check. Mike check. But hey, I'm dead serious, bro. Email me your uh your your email and I'll send you a, a, a fantasy football so we can get down, man. Hey, Christiana, what was I last year, bro? Christiana is the king. Yeah. If you was looking at the at the beginning, Chris, uh uh trip yeah, oh, the go thing. go look at uh the first day they ever won. That was it. that was a fantasy football champion for yeah. last year, bro. It puts me out. She beat me four times last year, bro. Four. Count them up. 
one, two, three, four, man. But yeah, man. Now, so we'll keep this thing. Oh yeah. Also, gotta gotta call this out. Caleb Williams looked very good Saturday. Again, this is against base defenses in the preseason. We're not giving it too much. Okay. Uh, Trips say, say, to go said thing. We got it now. Don't you? Right on. Right yeah, on. Appreciate it. We got to go. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, man. You know. Hey, hey, Trip the Ghost, did you see the the episode where we got Frank Martin the Ghost? We interviewed Frank, man. That's my homie, bro. Talk to him every ghost. fight. <laughs> every fight that happens, I'm, I'm hitting up Frank, and we we talk about what just happened. But um, but yeah, bro, check that out. If you haven't seen that interview, Trip the Ghost, real one, bro. Uh, yeah, it, shoot me an email address. But um, yeah, Caleb Williams went in this weekend, man. Uh, the guy's different. I was talking with you know, I was at Mark's event last night. Yeah. I was talking with Tommy Harris, former D line of the uh, you know, D uh D tackle with the 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 uh Chicago Bears yeah. and Oklahoma, of course. And uh he was talking, you know, he said that when Caleb came up to on the, you know, we first got there, they called Tommy up to take him around or whatever. And he was just saying, This guy's different, man. Yeah. And, and I I'm I'm expecting something pretty special out of this kid, you know? And uh, uh Tariq Hill mentioned, you know, he are he's already reminding him of Pat Mahomes as well. You know, with, with with the way he's playing, and it's uh, it's preseason again. Yeah, when the kid is he, the kid is very different, man. The, his uh, from his upbringing to his lifestyle, you know, to being one of the first NIL kings, basically. Oh, yeah. He got twenty one million when he, when he came to the Bears. My boy was braided up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So different, different mentality. Yeah. But that's something he was already used to because his parents is well off. And like he was it's like he was bred for this spot. So it's gonna be interesting to see this kid, man. You know, I'm lo- I'm looking forward to it. I've been watching him since he was in high school in DC. He was cold. I'm seeing this kid breaking these runs off. And then realizing he's a quarterback. And I'm like, hold on, this this dude has a beast. Oh yo, yo, we'll see, but let's not uh let's not throw him up there patchwork. Hey, I I you know, I'm just saying. Oh, like, I'm, I don't, I don't want to tip of my excitement because I, I don't talk much about Caleb Williams, and I haven't. You know, when he was in Oklahoma, we talked about him a little bit. Then he went out to USC. That pissed me off. I'm a Notre Dame guy. You know what I'm saying? If you didn't know. Oh Lord, here we go with the Notre Dame. No, I'm just saying. No, nah, Notre Dame, all right, right man. Better get it right. Notre Dame, all right, man. Hey, if you didn't know. Hey, 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 y'all, I, all I, I, I. I <laughs> I went ahead to teach the fight now. What's up, Caleb Knight? Huh? Uh, what you say? What's up, Caleb Knight? He can do nothing about them boys, huh? I'm going to try to Caleb beat Notre Dame. Because they thought they played every year. Now that I need him, no, now nah, he didn't get that dude. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, right, man. He just played him one time. Oh, one time? And we got him last year. They don't play every year anymore? Well, he was in Oklahoma. Then he transferred to USC out of Oklahoma. So he always played him. Uh, my boy. How many years you played at, at, at Oklahoma? I mean, I mean at uh, USC. I thought he played two I, years. I thought he played one. Was it two? May have been two years. I'm yeah, he played two because he got a he got a Heisman, and then last year he came back. Last year he was trying on the most show there after that one game. But I understand they, though. We're able to get to the polls. They're making four five. They're making the bread already. Man, he Caleb lived in a condo overlooking the ocean in college. Now he's in Chicago. I mean, he can the Great Lakers basically overlooking the ocean. I'm sure he's gonna get a, a spot. I think he said he's gonna move nothing near Oprah. <laughs> and I believe it. Yeah, well, see, he liked the ball boy. Man. You know, the ball boy was driving uh, uh, Ferraris and Maseratis when they was in high school. You know, he liked the ball Yeah, boy. straight up. Yeah, no, I mean. That's I, a fact. Yeah. 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 They didn't see it, man. So, yeah, man, Caleb, Caleb should be a phone in the watch, man, young buck. Uh, Denver's got a good problem on their hand. They have a, a quarterback competition brewing over there, right? Between who? Uh, Sean Payton, of course, is the the man, okay? Uh, but quarterback controversy between Bo Nix, who has played very well as a rookie, very well, very consistent all preseason. The man played six years in college, you know? So he's a grown man. He's 24 years old as a rookie. He's a grown man. But he's handling himself very well. And he's, and he's in competition. And, cool. and he's in competition with former number what one and number two draft pick at the New York Jets, Zach Wilson. A very gifted athlete that went to a broken organization that is now with a very good coach and is looking like himself again. 
in on the West Coast or on the West, right? But he went to BYU. He's a BYU kid out of Utah. Now he's in Denver. So he's very, very comfortable surroundings. You know, he's, you know, he likes Stifler's mom. You know, he's a very confident young man. Yeah, yeah. And then, so, um, how many, you know, everybody, coaches get a lot of credit for. So how many coaches have Sean, I mean, how many quarterbacks have Sean Payton actually coached? Uh, I mean, uh, Tony Romo's one who, okay. I'm cool with Romo. Okay. A lot of people feel so okay. that way about Romo. I feel good with him. Um, a lot of people feel about him the same way you feel about Dak. Yeah. yeah. I felt like I felt about him like I did about Dak at one point until, you know, at the end of the season. Or at the end of his career. And then he got Drew Brees. You know? And, and he did well with Drew Brees. They won some some titles. Uh, <laughs> didn't have. <laughs> I'm going to say it like this. To me, Drew Brees was an easy coaching job. Just, just to no. Me. He was already telling the guy when he got him, no doubt. But I mean, it's not me. That was he's a coaching job. Yeah, but you, any coach couldn't have coached him though, because we're talking about an undersized quarterback that maximized his potential. Okay. And they couldn't do it in San Diego. That's why they. But they didn't even give him a chance. He just played one year. He got hurt. All coaches can't coach him. Yeah. yeah. But all I'm saying that was he's a coaching job. So I'm not sure he's a quarterback guru like everybody else, because you ain't. You know, because you coach three, four quarterback, but you ain't coach nobody. But but really, Drew, but, but you can't argue his offense though. He's a very creative offensive guy, and he knows how to highlight his talent. Okay. When Reggie Bush was there, he was a highlighted player, okay. right? Okay. Uh, uh, my, uh, Michael, uh, my my boy has been hurt for the past few years. So I'm gonna say it like this: I, this is this is John Payton. What second year in Denver or third? Uh, second, second. I hope he do better than he did last year. Oh, he well, I, He didn't look too innovative. He didn't look nothing last year. I'm just Russell Wilson had a pretty decent year last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and I, and, and, and I know they started off though, but they ended very strong. Absolutely, they ended strong. Like you say, Russell Wilson. I mean, I'm, I'm look, just, Russell Wilson yeah. his job to Justin Fields. Yeah, yeah. Because he ain't very good, but he yeah. had a decent year last year. Yeah. Yeah. So that that coaching closed that gap. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And, and, you know, what, what did he do with that? Some people are. Are easier to coach than others. I'm gonna say it like that. Yeah, no doubt about it. And but Russell Wilson, you know, he was getting compared to Drew Brees more than anybody for a while when he was in Seattle. Okay. Because he's got Super Bowl wins and he's an undersized quarterback, primarily for that undersized quarterback thing. Yeah, because he can't throw like Drew Brees. No, Drew Brees is an accuracy king. And Drew, my boy, and I'm gonna say it like this: Drew Brees been doing that ever since he was at Westlake. Man, I went and seen Bruce, Drew Brees yep. at Westlake yep. High School. And they won a state championship. But do you know what I said? Who is this little old dude? Down boys like up like this. Five, seven, bro. Then when he went to Purdue. The, the Purdue, the only thing, he just didn't have no teammates. Man. Man, man Drew, I, 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 oh, he used to beat him up in Notre Dame. He had, he had some good tight ends through there. I, but, I, I mean, mean, really, I mean, it was Purdue, though. Yeah, yeah. Baller maker. Yeah, but I'm just saying that Sean Payne, we we going to see much. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah, we, I mean, I, no, I, I, I was. I was, before 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 I realized how great Mike McCarthy is and how awesome he is and I hope he coaches the Dallas Cowboys forever. I ain't gonna say all that. I'm gonna say that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, that's why I recognize that. Had all that talent at Green Bay, you got one. Yeah, for arms of talent at Green Bay. Before I recognized how great Mike McCarthy was. Yeah, I know Jay A recognized. I used to. Jay A know he's great. I used to think that uh. Sean Payton will be here. <laughs> That's an inside joke, y'all. I wish I could tell it, but yes, Mike McCarthy is great. He's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> no, my <laughs> favorite Dallas Cowboys coach of all time. Outside of Jimmy. I can't I can't put him over Jimmy. He's number two to Jimmy. And I want him here as long as he can be here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So as long as he wants to coach, we'll yeah. say that. I, I'm gonna say okay. <laughs> I'm in total agreement with Jimmy right now. <laughs> but uh, but but I, I felt that Sean Payton would be an amazing coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, I think so too. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But keep talking, Jay. Yeah, Jay. I, hey, I got to do a little producer right now. Yeah, I don't want to do the work with this. Hey, you got to got to go produce a little sante real quick. You know, but nah, man. So I, I'm 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 curious to see who's going to win this this this, this quarterback competition because uh, Zach Wilson he wasn't drafted so I for for, for no reason. By the Jets, he's a dog, and I wouldn't be shocked if that's who Sean Payton ends up starting with, right? Because he's still—I—I I wonder who's the oldest of the two. 
Because Bo Nix is 24 already. Zach is probably older, huh? I'd imagine. I'd imagine he's older. But no, nah, man, it, it, it's a it's a it's a nice little battle over there, uh, going right there. No nation's a creation. Don't like you don't you don't like Bo Nix, huh? Oh, yeah. He also cheated uh, on that uh, pi no call. I mean, bro, like that's football, man. It's pi no calls every day. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, oh man, that what was that no call in that? Was it uh, the Saints versus Minnesota in the in the playoffs a couple oh, years ago? Man. That was horrible. Oh, man. Don't even talk about these no calls. Yeah, man. Oh. And they, they asked Michael Irvin if he could play in the day's game. He said no. <laughs> oh, ho. He ain't got flags every every route. Yeah. Mike was very physical. Yeah, you push very the you push the folks around. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to keep this train rolling, man. I know we spent a little time on the NFL, man. We loved it. Welcome back. Hey, come on with it. 14 days away. Yeah, yeah come on with the real deal. Let's all go. This, all this old preseason. It's 14, 15 days away, I think. Yeah, something days? like that. Yeah. yeah. We got we got Kansas City and the, and the Ravens. Like we got a Thursday night game on the first week, I think. Yeah, but you know, we ain't got to wait on no more. We no longer have to wait. I think my phone done died. That's why I tried to plug it up a second ago. We no longer have to wait <laughs> for college football to start. Oh, yeah. This weekend. This weekend. I'm right here, y'all. I ain't going nowhere. We're going to treat this like a watch party real quick. But this weekend, we have Florida State taking on Georgia Tech. Those close, those, those, state, those schools are probably a good four hours away. But they playing in Dublin, Ireland. They're playing in Dublin Island. Dublin Island. I didn't know that. The NCAA is, is going uh, global. Now, I understand the connection. I do understand the connection for Notre Dame to go, go to Dublin Island and, Island and play a little, little pool ball. Yeah. Like Bobby Bobby Boucher mama say. But I don't quite get uh I don't even really understand why Florida State and Georgia Tech are playing in Dublin. Marvin. Does that make sense? Marvin. Opportunity, huh? NCAA? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna get the graphic back up in yeah. a second, y'all. Yeah, uh but NCAA. I NCAA. Yeah, opportunity. Yeah. And uh, they're probably getting a little, little extra bag for that. They got that probably getting just a, they get a regular bag and then they get a little bag on the side also. I'm gonna say that. And if you don't know, again, I know we got a lot of new, a lot, and thank y'all very much, man. We got a lot of new subscribers. If you're watching right now, please hit that subscribe button. If you don't know, man, Mike Norvell, head coach of Florida State, was my high school teammate, my bro. He used to pick me up for school, like. I ain't have a whip, and I didn't care because I had homies yeah. that had cold whips. Oh, yeah. You know, and I probably didn't need a whip at that time in my life. But Mike used to pick me up for school, and my boy Chris, my boy BG, my boy BB, my boy Jerome, shout out, and Ray. Big Ray. Ray in Colorado right now on, on the uh, staff. But my boy Mike, that's my brother. So that's why I'm going to talk about Florida State every week. I'm going to talk about Colorado every week. My squad is Notre Dame. But suddenly, I'm Florida State and Colorado fans, too, is what I'm getting at. But Florida State is open up, opening up this weekend against Georgia Tech to open up the NCAA season um, on the, uh, I think it's 24th. Might be Thursday. Might be Thursday night. No, it's Friday. Or Saturday night. Yeah, on the 24th. And uh, – as everybody knows, Florida State was absolutely hosed last season. I'm still pissed off about it because I still think they had the best team in the nation. I don't care what that Georgia game looked like. They had 13 guys out. Yeah. And several of them got drafted. And six or seven of them got drafted. <laughs> I'm talking early. Yeah. You know, they had a very – they had the best defense in the land last year to me, right? I, I look at numbers. I don't look at. I don't know if they're ranked number one, but when I watched the play, they played like it. Man, they had a lot of good skill position guys. They they played. Oh, and the receivers, yeah. Keon Coleman, Travis at quarterback. My boy, my six seven guy. Oh, yeah. The the receiver that went this year in the draft. Yeah. My 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 boy had six seven starting receiver, six four starting receiver, two running backs. I believe Benson was drafted this year. Uh, number three 
from from Florida State last year. I believe they had another running back that was drafted or was supposed to get drafted, may have gotten injured or something like that. But they had so much talent, man. Oh, yeah. And for the NCAA to pull what they pulled last year was completely bogus because that was the most 90s-like Florida State defense I had seen in a long time, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had some talent. Well, I, I saw them play at least two, three times last year. Yeah. They, they had talent all over the oh, field, man. size, and it, it wasn't just one group. They was rotating more talent in. Yeah, and I can't – I don't know any of the guys' names, but I just know what I remember. They yeah. Had, they had one linebacker. Oh, he, he's back. He's back this oh, year. Back. Yeah. He, 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 I, I know he, uh, he's number 10. Yeah. 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 I, I can't think of his name. I can find it right now if I want to look, but I want to stay locked in on the show. But, uh, but no, nah, man, check out that game, Florida State versus Georgia Tech. I'm curious to see what Florida State does this year. Mike Novell's an excellent coach. I, he will be <laughs> – he will be coaching in the NFL one day, unless he chooses to make a career out of I'm, NCAA. I'm going to say this. Might say, say this here. Well, you know, I understand. I, I mean, I yeah. want to test your, test your skills against the Yeah, I mean, it's just, dog, the, man. Okay. it's just a matter of fact of man, wanting to be an and one, one, uh, uh, achieving greatness, right? Yeah. And you always... If you aspire to be a coach, you always aspire to coach at the highest level, right? Now, things might change in your yeah. say Some coaches don't. But, oh, so, I mean, I just thought that. Here. But the great coaches, like uh, Vincent Lombardi, I'm sure, aspire to coach at the highest level. I'm sure Bill Parcell, yeah. like these coaches, aspire to coach at the highest level, which is the NFL. Now, it's, you know, it's an understanding of, hey, that's a completely different beat yeah. right there. But is it in this day of NIL? I don't think it is anymore. Yeah. And then, you know, I actually know some people personally that got a chance to go to another level, and they say, no, this is where I can have the most influence. Absolutely. This is what I want to do. Absolutely. This is what I love. I mean, it wasn't the pros, but it was college. Yeah. And it's like, no, nah, because I'm going to have more impact on the kids over here than if I knew for college. And I mean, you know, I mean that's what Dion said. Yeah, you know, some people got, you know, I'm going to say it like this. Dion is a college coach to me. Absolutely, he is. Because he's a... Uh, and he doesn't aspire to be an NFL. He's been a player. He knows yeah, how to He don't have to. He don't know. With that knowledge, and he's already been there as a player, that's a whole different mentality as a... Yeah. Somebody that hadn't been there at all. But, you know, like I say, yeah. but if uh, but if Mike Dunnarville decide to uh, stay in college, I don't think that has anything with him aspiring to be. That's just where he... What his niche is and what he can do the most good at. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. And I, I mean, because <laughs> coaching, coaching pros, coach, that could be exhausting. I, I didn't know Mike, though. Oh, well, yeah, you going worse. It's the, it's the X's and O's to get him yeah. going. Yeah. He, want, he wants to beat you here, you know, as, as well as the work. The work ethic. Building something out of nothing. Right? Okay. Uh, forming a team. Uh, creating a plan. And then building from that plan and, and seeing it through. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say this. You can do that better in college than you can in pro. Yeah, no doubt. It's a lot of moving parts in pro. Oh, yeah. And, and you got dudes that are chasing that bag. And they yeah, don't yeah, I don't want to hear all that. I mean, but so, uh, so I don't know when personally you do, but if you want to yeah. coach on the high level and do all that, that's good. But what I'm saying, it, it can be done in the pros too. Look at the Texans. You feel me? Yeah, and, 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 but all. at the same time, it, and, and he's a former Mike, Mike's a former player as well. He played at the driver saw, but you know, we'll see what's up, man. But I'm looking forward to this game. Also, just wanted to uh, shout out the fact that Travis Hunter was named to the uh, preseason All American, the only Colorado player, which is surprising to some, uh, that Shador was not on there. Uh, I'm not surprised by that, but Travis Hunter absolutely deserves it. The point is dog, both sides of the ball. Both sides of the football, so you know, and it's it's a lot of reasons why Shador didn't get named out, and it's and, and, and most of them is not football related. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. Yeah, yeah, DJ Longale, I, I believe that's how you say his name is now the quarterback over at, at Florida State as well. You know, he was at Clemson and transferred to Oklahoma, or Oregon State last year, okay. and then uh, now he's he's over at Florida State. But they got some more guys behind him though that can go. Like straight up, but DJ Alungale, uh, I believe that's how you say his name again, uh, is there as a, a a senior, I believe, this year. So oh, yeah. we'll keep this train moving right along. So WNBA got started up last week, man, and already Caitlin Clark was right back to her usual uh, self. Uh, set another record. Already set the record for assists, uh, assists, assists. <laughs> 
in a season a uh, for a rookie for a rookie season. Uh, I think I think the re- previous record was like two hundred and twenty, like two twenty four, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and it was said, you know, back in the day, they played 30 games. They play more games now. But Caitlin broke the record in 28 games. Yeah. So but I'm, she still, yeah. I mean, it was broken regardless. So how many games do they actually play? Now? I, I like 50, like 50 something. Like 50 okay, okay. okay, so they're about halfway. Yeah. yeah. A little over halfway. Yeah, a little over halfway. Yeah, you know, and this old thing, homeboy oh, would say, well, she's, she got Caitlin is this, this back up to the same thing again because uh, uh, her game is different now in the pros. Yeah, on the way different, and 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 that shows her greatness to me. She's just not coming in just trying to shoot three. Nope, and that's all. She's coming in putting a stamp on the game. Yeah, and by by being a facilitator, a playmaker, and hitting the threes. Yep, yep. Now with, yeah. she she's the she's showing her complete game. Yeah, she's yeah. showing that she knows how to play with others, and she had to take on the role as that shooter for Iowa to be successful. Oh, absolutely. And she did it very well. Yeah, and then now she's taking on another and, goal yeah. for her team to be successful. Because uh, believe it or not, the word on the street is they got a better shooter than her on the squad. And she knocks down trades consistently. So, Caitlin is getting the ball to her. Uh, she's getting the ball down low. Uh, to, um, Let's say it like this. Uh, Aaliyah Boston? She may not necessarily be a better, at this moment in time, she may be a better shooter in it. In the WBA, okay. because yeah. she's a veteran. Yeah. She know how the game goes. She's ingrained. So I'm not going to say that, and I'm not going to say Caitlin is better than her, but let's not say that after Caitlin's first 28 games. Yeah, Kel- Kelsey Mitchell is who I'm talking about. Yeah, so let, but let's not say that after 28 games that she's a better shooter than Caitlin. Let's say that after two years. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no I mean, And she may be. I'm not saying she's not, but I'm just saying that we already know that uh, Caitlin can shoot. But this is what we didn't know. We didn't know that she could facilitate the way that she does. The way she does. Absolutely. And that to me, that to me, when you are more than one, yeah. one dimensional, yeah. you have elevated yourself to a whole nother level. You're not just a shooter. Yeah. You're a player. Yeah, you are a, you are a real top-notch player. Yeah, and she's chasing triple doubles. You know, I think rebounding is where she's going to lack. But, you, but if she can catch 10, she's going to be good for her. Hey. Oh. Uh, I'm not even gonna say that she gonna lack on rebounders because I'm gonna judge her rebounding against other point guards. I'm not yeah. gonna judge her rebounding against uh, Angel Reese. Yeah. Oh yeah, now nah, trip the goals. Now nah, you right, you right about it. she ain't the best guard in the league. Arike, yeah, she's here in Dallas right now. Oh yeah, on the wings, yeah, no doubt. She in that All Star game, she established herself as the best guard in all of the WNBA to me. And that, and that all- Nobody stopped her. And that all-star version of the, the, um, yeah, Olympic team. The Olympic team. Oh, yeah, man. When she hit that 34 in the second half. Yeah. And they got it at, you know, when she she was on that heat check for a minute. But she hit three of them in a row before she missed one on that heat check. Yeah. You know? She hit four. Man. And I then, mean. And then she came down and throwed up a heat check. Yeah. And, I, and, and when somebody's that hot, you can't be mad at them. And then a couple of minutes later, she came back and hit about two more. Man. So, so you, you can get a heat check when you're hot. Absolutely. And, and then when she got a heat check, she came down, facilitated a little, got back in the floor of the game. And then when the call, then when the ball came back to her naturally, bam, she knocked it down. Knocked him down. Yeah, so she. Yeah, Enrique is no doubt number one. Yeah, number one. No number doubt, number one. No number one. Sure. Right now. Not, not right. giving no, not taking no credit away from her, but what I am going to do is give credit to Kaylin Clark, right? I'm just tired of, I'm, it's just too much racial stuff going on, man. She going hard, P. I'm gonna give her credit. Oh yeah, she going hard. I'm gonna give her credit. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like a lot of people have, and this ain't taking nothing away from Angel Reese. This ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. Kaylin Clark is doing a thing. That, uh, see, I'm saying. See, this is, see, this is, this is here. A lot of people got this word, what they call Hayden. And then a lot of times you say, you can, you can tell the truth about somebody. Yeah. And they can say you hating. But this is the thing. That's just hating on Kayla Clark because her, her proof is in the pudding. It's a pudding. In a, in a pudding. She averages 17 point, what, eight? Yeah. And, 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 uh, eight point three rebounds. Come on, man. She doing what it do, man. She doing what it do. Put up some very impressive stats as a, as, a, as a youngster, as a rookie coming into the league. And I can only see it getting better. I can only see it getting better. But she'll know it. And she gained more confidence. Oh, yeah. And she gets you know, stronger. Like, see a little muscle there. Yeah, it's a man. Which I didn't see either. That's looking huge when she was standing up next to uh, my boy, 
Um, and Aaron Judge the other day, man. I was like, God, no, Curly. Skinny ankles, thick thighs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but moving on. Moving on. So quickly, a uh, little MLB talk. So uh, let me get the graphics straight in that. Wow. There it is. Aaron Judge, speaking of, uh, hit his 300th home run uh, for the Yankees. Uh, fastest ever to 300 home runs, I think, by far. Uh, Aaron Judge absolutely has a chance to do something very special in his career if he continues on his pace. Uh, but we shall see. Yeah. I'm ready to see. You know, yeah. and, and, and right after this happens, I'm hearing uh, dudes hating on him. A little league coach, you know, they had the game out of the little league complex the other day, and they were complaining, talking about Aaron Judge didn't show up to this, and he didn't do this and that. And like, bro, shut up, dog. You didn't want to show up to a little league game? Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the fact that he didn't show up to the little league game. I don't know what it was. It was some event they didn't show up to. I don't care, man. Bro, shut do up, dog. Do you know Aaron Judge's schedule? Do you know what he got to do? Man, leave these players alone. Come on, bro. Don't nobody care, bro. First off. You like, don't care, bro. First you off, get on the, on, the, on the scene, bro. bro. First off, get you a life and you won't be wearing whatever jewelry. Let's see if y'all can win this Little League uh, World Series yeah. first, bro. Yeah. Then you can have uh, a bit of – your words still won't matter, dog, no. at the end of the day. No, it like, shut up, bro. No, get up off the man, bro. The man focused on hitting 300 home runs. I'm sure he said hi and saw plenty of autographs in the meantime, in between time. But, bro, shut up, bro. And if he didn't, it's okay. Oh, man. And if he didn't, it's okay. No. It's okay. It's, yeah, bro. You know, because this is, this is, this is what I want to ask anybody that has ever got an autograph. What you do with it? And I'm like, bro, like, I'm sorry your little feelings got hurt here in Judge this show, but I saw other guys there. Yeah. You know? I saw other guys there. Be grateful for the opportunity, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't expect everybody to show it. Like, bro, don't nobody care. You care about that like that. I care about the kids, too. I ain't coaching no little league 12-year-old team, though. No. That don't mean I don't hate the kids, but I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it, dog. The last place I want to go is to a place with a bunch of screaming little kids, bro. Like, straight up, bro. Like, it is what it is. I didn't feel like it that day. That don't make me a bad person. No, no, right. Like, hey, hey, I'm going to tell you this right now. Relax, man. When me and my wife got to the restaurant, they can't see me about no kids, man. Yeah. Period. Period. Oh, we went to the cruise, and it was an adult-only area. Yeah. And then somebody brought some kids to the pool. They got to a pot in there. Exactly. They had to get a pot in there. It ain't about to get nothing negative to the kids. But we came to the adult-only area for a reason. Reason, absolutely. Now you go blame the kids. Why you do that? So get on up out of here, dog. Hey, uh, hey, I'm, I'm gonna tell you how. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Hey, hey. but I witnessed it. Hey, I went to an all-inclusive down in Plaza del Carmen. The whole resort was adult only. Man, no children. And I and I got so used to not seeing children. Me and my wife went walking down the street. Just, 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 I seen some kids. I was almost going to say, what they doing here? Yeah. And I love kids. And if you say, you know, and I, and, and I love kids yeah. and all that, but when I, but when it's an adult only situation, I need adults only. Need it, man. Oh, yeah. We need it, man. And then you don't know Aaron Judge's uh, schedule. So quit worrying about that and, and just uplift the kids that you coach. Back, 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 back. Give, well, give me 50 feet. You ain't no kidding to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Made a song behind them kids. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we, we, getting, we getting through there, man. I just, last, my, my last uh, little baseball, my last little baseball for the day, man. We uh, we mentioned this kid during the uh, College World Series, man, Christian Moore. Remember, he hit the. Don't, don't move your fans with Jack Lighty. Let him strike out. Oh, yeah, you can't move past Jack Lighty. Can't move. So this is a prospect coming up. We, we had him on the Rangers for a short period of time this year. But on, uh, I believe, Monday, Jack Ladder had an outing, man. The dude threw three and two-thirds of an inning and struck out everybody. Faced 11 dudes, struck, struck out. out 11 dudes. 100-mile-an-hour fastball. But he was breaking them off with change-ups, curveball. Like, so Ranger fans, you know, it's all good, man. The future is very bright. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm wearing his glasses. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, speaking of them glasses, we're going to hit that one time. 
Uh, and then uh, next up, and then uh, yeah, Christian Moore, as I mentioned, man, that's the kid that uh, that hit the hit for the cycle. Yeah. Uh, during the College World Series, uh, the kid, you know, he's been drafted by the the Angels, the uh, Anaheim Angels, and uh, putting up some very impressive numbers so far. Uh, matter of fact, in his first thirty one at bats, he's seen forty three total bases. Has six home runs in his first seven games. That's pretty impressive. So the kid can hit. He can play some ball. He can hit a baseball and hit it well and hit it hard. So uh, just keep your eye out for Christian Moore, man. Just want to give you a little heads up on that guy. But we're going to keep this train rolling. Is uh, that how the trip it goes, man? Hey, book, book high. Yo, book in the high. So we're going to discuss RG3 and Samantha Ponder. Oh, I know RG3 got fired on his day off. Yeah, yeah, he got uh, fired. That boy turned into Craig, dog, on Friday. <laughs> he got fired. Well, right? I got fired on his day off. Why you do that, RG3? What <laughs> happened? I don't know. ESPN going hard, man. They fired a lot of people. They don't care, dog. Yeah, I don't know. Get out of here. They hitting that boy and arrow. Get out of here, dog. Yeah, not a, Get out of here. They're not left handed. Not a young See, lady. Doing? I don't know what happened with yeah, it. Uh, but what happened with Samantha Potter, man? Uh, let me... He probably got out of there too, like uh, no ESP. Yeah, I don't know. Well, was she on? Yeah, on even... I don't even know where she was at, where she was at, or what. But... We seen Samantha. I like this. Oh yeah. I hope it's ain't no, no nastiness. But see, if you see something, say something. That's what we yeah, talking I'm, about, man. Yeah, man, we like for people to jump in, have a little something to say. Oh, she out of there. At the ESPN, that's what I told her. Samantha Ponder, yeah, she out of there. Man, the ESPN is going fed. I don't know what's going on. I was, uh, Greenberg, I mean, downsizing, man. Hey, well, the cream rise to the top. You cut your fat off. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. People cut their fat off. Absolutely. You know, they cut their fat off. And Lipo yeah, suction. Uh, what they call it, a Drake, a Drake BBL. Yeah. Basically, getting that BBL, getting that uh, Oscar. Uh, De La Hoya, the stomach job. Yeah. You know, they getting that liposuction. They cutting that fat off, man. So, <laughs> sorry about that, Samantha. But I'm sure you're going to have plenty of opportunities, man. Everybody that falls down from ESPN seems to fall. So, seem to, seem to bounce right back to straight up to, to Fox 1. Fall, fall full. Yeah, Definitely like not that. taking anybody's, not taking that lightly. It sucks to hear. I'm sorry that happened. But, yeah, RG3, I mean, man, RG3 out there doing, you know, Look like Andre 3000 out there. <laughs> yeah. Going in and everything. Yeah, so they, so they didn't, so they didn't, they wasn't feeling RG3 like that. They wasn't that cool. I mean, yeah. not. Yeah. Like, bro, like, it's a, some cast is just cool. Like, part, Big Perk. Yeah. Big Perk is just cool. He is who he is. RG3 was doing a little bit too much. <laughs> so, RG3, RG3 been doing a little bit too much for a long time. You know, they're doing a little bit anyway. That a little bit too much, man. Anyway. Look, but yeah, man, it sucks, man, it sucks, but. It is what it is, man. It's a revolving door in many industries. I'm sure he got used to that from his career in football. Uh, moving on, boxing. So, coming up, let me see. Let me see. Lord, I need mean, graphic right with us. Lord, yeah. Martin Mayweather. Money Mayweather taking on John Gotti, the third man. Not Irv Gotti, as Ja Rule used to say, but John Gotti, the third, you know, real Bob. We had the fake mob with the real mob. Say, well, you know, they, they always, they want to kill each other last time. Mm -hmm. And this, so I don't even know why they're doing it no more, man. I know why. John got got some of that brain. Yeah, and then this whole thing, uh, all I can see is like. Yeah, he saw, he saw the money that came from him. He's like, hey, let's run that back, dog. I ain't getting nothing. No, I ain't asking you. I ain't asking. Some of these, run it uh, back, Floyd. Some of these exhibitions. Run it back. Like, no. say it like they getting out of hand. And uh, uh -oh. I don't, and I'm. I'm halfway done with the exhibition. I want to see some real fights. I'm just oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we got we got plenty of exhibitions, and then you know we got Mike Tyson. But the real fight. You know who really fighting this year? Who's really fighting more than anybody else? Abdullah Mason. Abdullah Mason is a young talent. Y'all need to go ahead and write him down for a fight this year. Boy had he four and this year, and I don't know if he's fought seven rounds. <laughs> Cause my boy get rid of him quick. Abdullah Mason is a beast, man. He is the best young prospect out there right now. If anybody's going to give Javante Davis a run for their money in the next two to three years, 
It's Abdullah Mace. If he decides to stay at 135, though, because he's young. He's 20 years old. But the boy got hands like a surgeon, huh? Very precise with his placement. You know what I'm saying? So he, he went out and fought Michael O'Hare, O'Hare, however you want to say his name, uh, Saturday, Junior, uh, and uh, beat the brakes off of him real quick. You know, he didn't even, he still, Michael O'Hare, until they showed the replay, he hadn't seen that uppercut that, that knocked him on his ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might have saw it in the replay. Man, man I'm talking, bro, anything he left open, he was covering up. Abdullah took it from right here, just below, just above his belt. And I'm talking, oh, like a nice swift one. A nice one, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm like, bro, he's not missing anything right now. And I'm, the combos he was throwing, and they just coming out. My buddy threw one punch. Oh, he finally threw a jab. Bow. And I'm talking, before he got it back, go. <laughs> and Blue he wasn't even in the stands to, to return a, a punch. Had hey, one coming back at him, though. No. That's when you got hand. Boy got, got hand. Hit. That's when you know you got hand. And they just firing off, huh? Oh, oh, yeah. They just firing off, man. But my boy's 4 0 this year. He is all of a sudden 15 and 0. Has a 15 and 0 record. And me, he started the year 11 and 0. Nice 15. But 15 and 0 and 8 points. By the end of the year, he's going to be 17 and 0. Yeah, good chance. Good guy. They're going to be fighting every two months. And good chance. We got five months left. Yeah, five, man. Four months left. And he's a very exciting fighter. Y'all got to go watch that young dude. Yeah. You know, make it. Go back and watch. And they're making pretty quick work of these guys so they can come back and fight again. Wait, it didn't even work. That's why he keep coming back. Yeah, yeah, they ain't even. He's like, man, that's like I can't even fight, man. Like, I did more work in sparring. Yeah. In, in the training sessions, man. Say, so Tate, Turkey need to make that fight, but Tate don't mess with the. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's that's strange because he's, he's Muslim now, right? Who is that? Uh, Tate. He Muslim now? Yeah, he Muslim now. You know, he changed his name or something else. Oh, okay. But, I mean, you know, he still, everybody else still call him Tank. He he hadn't been very hardcore about it. Oh, okay. But when we had that guest come on, it was like, why are you still calling him Javani Pants? What's his name? I don't know his name. When I find his name out, I'll start calling him. Yeah, I typed that his name. He's almost stupid. It's like something Wahid or something. Oh, okay. It's Javani Davis, but yeah. it's something Wahid, something, something. I'm going to say, okay. Yeah, man, but. No, no, I'm not downplaying. I'm yeah. just gonna say, I mean, because I've been calling, I've been calling him Tank more than I call him Javon Davis. Yeah, no doubt. I no, so I'm almost, I'm almost with Tank. Yeah, I stick with Tank too. Mm -hmm. You gonna keep it at that? Yeah. That's a nickname. That's how we get down around here? Yeah. Nickname. Nickname. I've been judging my whole life around my family, you know, and I'm J around everybody else. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's weird when somebody calls me Jonathan. Yeah. But uh, also, you know, Mike Tyson and Jake, they starting late publicity again. They starting the market for that fight on November fifteenth. Okay. Do you feel any different about it than you did before? I feel like Mike got more time to train. It's starting to worry on me now. You, you tired of it? Yeah, I mean, you know, y'all had a day to counsel You know, are y'all hyping us up again? I'll see you on the PFT. Yeah, I mean. I'll see you on the 13th and 14th. You know, some of this stuff just exhausted me. You know what I'm saying? And I can't lie. This last little situation they did with the media was just so fake. They both pushed each other, but you could tell but neither one of them meant it. Mike pushed Jake hard. Jake. No, no, this is her. Well, Mike did pillow hands. But, 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 uh, but Mike didn't even mean it, though, because he was laughing right now. He was like. <laughs> but this is the thing. That's, don't let the laugh fool you, but this is the thing. That's crazy now. Yeah, yeah. Don't let that fool you. But you know why Jake pushed him back so? Yeah, Jake, Jake, because you know Mike can just go, go off script. <laughs> you know, y'all might have a contract saying, <laughs> No, I'm just being honest. Take nine minutes out of that pit hole. Y'all can sign the contract. <laughs> we gonna push each other, you know, send my heart. But then when Mike push, check, check, like, I know Mike can go off still <laughs> pity. I'm not gonna push it. Right I'm down. not gonna push him like he did me. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all because he know Mike can go off script. Hey, I love it. And if, and if, and if Mike go off script, he can bite your ear off. Hey, Mike will play there. Oh, Jake yeah. don't want that. Yeah. Jake want Mike to stick to the script. That's why he. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mike can dot, dot, dot. Because don't nobody know hey, Mike exactly well, what Mike won't do. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Well, they say a drop over nine. Yeah. Hey, well, they say a drop over nine. <laughs> then see what people don't realize. 
Then they say when the dive hit the flow. Yeah, then when the dive hit your head, if I had a flip top. Yeah, when your plank was through like that. Yeah, the dive still going down. I had to drop over dive, Michael Lucy. Michael Lucy. So then oh, I say, that's why Jake Paul said. He's like, <laughs> 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 he did like a, he, fin he finished it, but he didn't mean uh, nah, he didn't leave his at all. And that just showed me how he gonna feel that night. Yeah, oh, yeah. Turkey can make that fight though. Oh, he yeah. make that fight. Oh, yeah, man. I, 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 I love what he's doing for boxing, oh. by the way. Oh, yeah. Making dudes scrap. Absolutely. But we're gonna keep this thing moving on. And uh, we kind of mentioned them earlier. You know, uh, Tyreek, birth note, says sign a contract, Noah, 50 yards. Okay. They look at a 50 yard ring. Okay. Okay. You seen me run the off. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know I'm going to win. No, I'm going to win. No, I'm going to win. First off, you seen me run a hundred meters. Yeah. And then you said you could beat me. Yeah. Now you want to change the race. Yeah. Race him at a hundred, Tyree. You said you could beat me. I don't. Have you ever seen you know what I'm Have you ever seen Noah run a 50? No. So why you say you can beat me if you want to run a 50? Yeah, and no, I, you should be able to beat me in what, you, in what you saw me run. Run. Exactly. I read this talking. We all I mean, I saw him run a 60, but that's I also, I also saw to make it. I, I also saw, saw Jessica Gatlin say, quit playing. Yeah, I can beat you. You know what I'm saying? Jessica, Jessica Gatlin. He, he trying to get in there. Yeah, because. Hey, let's line him up. Because let's line him up. This is how you do it. You line up the fastest. Let's say he was in nine lanes. Let's take three of the fastest NFL guys and three track guys. Not even the fastest, so. Noah, Justin, and, and no, let the same folks come back in this town. No, I'm going to get some water from the WB High School. That man's 10, 10, 10 point, whoa, whoa. I'm going to go get the ball from WB. I'm going to go get the ball from advertising and get the money out. The ball from Sasuke Seagull. I'm talking about the money of the yeah. money of. Yeah, yeah. For everybody to, to, yeah. to make some. They like, no, they potentially make 30 million off of this race. Because, because this is the first thing. You say he's not going to get in. Yeah. Because he know he can't beat no one. Yeah. And you say to, you say to the side, but, but I tell you this. But, 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 if, but, but, if, but if you say race, Tyreek, he can beat him. Yeah. But he can't beat no one. But boy, we're in a 4 2 2 in, in jeans, like, in, in some very laid back yeah. clothes. Yeah. 4 2 2. Talk about you saying both. Yeah, it's not laughing. About 30 meters. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I'm saying. The track speed is different. So you 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 saw me run a hundred. Now you want to race me at a 50 talking about signing the contract. Yeah. Won't you race me at what you you can say you can beat me at a 50, you say I can beat me by a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you must be talking about the races you saw me run. Yeah. Tyreek just told me. Just like when you say it while it's up. See, Tyreek is doing the Jerry Jones right now. Seven his name. And in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Tyreek doing the gym. Hey, man. great job. It ain't, it ain't mad at you, Tyreek. But, you can't, about you. but you can't beat nobody that was at the Olympics or nobody was at the Olympics. Matter of fact, you can't. That uh, one. I'm going to tell you this. Tyreek Hill came and win the state of Texas. No. In high school. <laughs> Not right now. Elver. Man. Elver. Elver. You washed up, Tyreek. No, you ain't washed up. <laughs> you ain't never had. No, you ain't never had world class speed. It's a whole different animal. Yeah, saying, you know? because this is the whole thing. Every it's like it's a lot of boys that sit the national record in high school. Tyreek wasn't yep. that one on. Yep, you right. You right. So you I right. take all the boys that run ten one in high school. You can't beat them, Tyreek. Hey, by yeah, if so, I go by history, you ain't gonna win that round, no, dog. You ain't gonna win that race. So Ty Tyreek just bought. He just keeping his name relevant. I'm gonna watch though. I need y'all. Oh, yeah, I need y'all. I need y'all to set that up. Hey, Turkey. Turkey need to hit that. Uh, Turkey need to hit that one up right there. Turkey need to go on and set that race up. They yeah. can't put that on national TV. Yeah, absolutely. But they can't because it's only 10 seconds or five seconds. <laughs> how, you, how you doing a whole, production with four, a whole production with four seconds? Absolutely. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. We almost, we well, well, let's do the thing, man. So, uh, Olympic update right now, man. So, uh, if you didn't know, now you know. But Jordan has lost her, Jordan Childs has lost her bronze medal officially. Uh, it has gone back uh, to Anna Bobachuk. Bobachuk? Yeah. Anna Bobachuk. The, the Romanian. Uh, the Romanian uh, gymnast? Yeah. Again, 
I don't feel any, yeah. any way about any of this. I felt like it was just sloppy by the Olympics. A lot of feeling hard for the Olympics. The Olympics is going to be sloppy. Yeah. I warned you before it started. Yeah. I said, so, the Olympics, something going to always happen. So it's all the kinds of ugly yeah. controversy. So that's just part of the course. For Unfortunately, the man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, don't know, you know, it, it, it sucks. Uh, Jordan, I wish you had your, your, your bronze. Uh, I also felt when you had the bronze, I felt the same way about Miss Anna. You know, yeah. uh, so to have it and then had it taken away from him, and then that's him. That means somebody did a, a a bad job, and that's why a lot of robots are getting taking these jobs right now. Yeah, no doubt. There's no lit. doubt, man. And uh, this is just horrible situation. But congratulations, Miss Anna Bobachuk. Uh, yeah, uh, did I say that? But uh, Barbara Sutter. Bar- uh, let me let me get your name right first. You know, I got I got I got I got notes. I got notes. I'm just Barbosu. Yeah. Let me see here. B-R-O-B-U-S. Let me get it right. S-A, I think. Get it right. Ooh, that is shit. Yep. Uh, Miss Anna Barbosu. Miss Anna Barbosu. 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 Uh, I know that's a, a nation that takes a lot of pride in their uh, gymnasts and gymnastics, so congratulations. Just wanted to say that. Horrible job by the Olympic Committee on the way that you've handled the whole situation. Uh, Jordan Childs, well done. Um, well done. Did your job out there. Uh, you hit your point. You didn't get your point. Unfortunate. They didn't uh, do their job well. Yeah. But it happens, man. That's life. There's yeah. times, you know. Life does you well. Sometimes it does you wrong. In this instance, no, no life ain't fine. Right? You know, you 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 got lemons in that situation right there. But it's all good, man. Got to make lemonade out of it, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one, next Olympics, uh, competing again. But moving on, we are down to what? What we down to, Jay? I don't know. Oh yeah, last we still on the Olympics right here. So Steve Kerr, you know, he is resigned. From the Olympics, I'm I'm uh, kind of glad. You you happy about that? Yeah, yeah. We need some different fresh. You feel good about it? Oh yeah, yeah. We need a fresh approach. No, it's... cause cause Steve Kerr been on that. He was assistant to I think Popovich or something. He, he been around that, but I think it's just thirty four of Olympics. Yeah, we need a new fresh mind because I mean, no, we just we just need a new fresh mind. Yeah, no doubt. I'm I'm with that. There's a uh, local thing. Nothing, nothing against Steve Kerr. He's a good coach. We just need some uh, fresh attitude and yeah. different di- different thinking. And I still think he was on some uh... BS. B- oh yeah, uh, Jim. I to mess them Celtics up. Yeah, uh, my boy, my boy got it's like a spy move right there. My boy Ben went in there, caused a whole bunch of craziness, and then and then got up out of there. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, bro, like, what's going on? Yep, had to go to that scene real quick uh, for one reason and one reason only because y'all know what time it is right now. Uh oh. What time? Oh, you know what time it is, don't you? Oh, 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 I am old. You know what time it is. Oh, let me go on. Let me make. Let me get it right. You know, I, I'm on a production game right now. Yeah, J. A. Doing it is on my production game. And, and if y'all, as the people don't know, what that I am old stands for, that stands for in my opinion. In my opinion, this is all opinion. This ain't no facts. This no is facts to it. In my opinion. This is uh, just just a thought that me and Unc may have, and you know, Unc. You want me to go first? Oh yeah, you definitely going first. Let me make sure I got you right though. I'm, I want to make sure you set up right. Oh. Make sure you're good to go. Need that title, bow. In my opinion, right here, yeah, I'll see it. it. Say IMO, don't it? That's what it says. Yeah. I just got to get it centered real quick, and then oh, I'm gonna give you the mic. In five, four, three, two, and oh Lord, it's not what I wanted to see right there at all. So in five, do that again. In five, three, four, four, and three, and two, and one. Oh, what's going there, man? In my opinion, yeah, this is what uh uh-huh. this this what. Tyler is exhausting for all kinds sports these days. In my opinion, we give too much individual credit to one person in team sports. Yeah. 
and this is this is just my opinion because when they say there, I mean, you know, two teams are playing, they'll say, I'm just using this for an example. Oh, Josh Allen, he be two. And I'll be thinking, no, Buffalo play Miami. Yeah. And uh, the Bills. Yeah. Be the Dolphins. Anyway. Yeah. Nah, it happened. You know, and this is the thing that I have been watching sports a long time. And the more teammates you have, the more you rely on your teammate. Absolutely. Basketball got five players. So one player can have a large effect on the game because he only got four teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball, you got eight, you, you got eight teammates. Oh, well, on the field was you. Yeah, at the other time. time. Now with you. Yep. And then you probably got a designated hitter. So that day you got, what, 10 people in the lineup. Yeah. You know, in the picture. That's, so, you know, so that's 10 people in the lineup. So that means that you are more dependent on nine teammates than you are four. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you play football, see, this is what people don't realize. Man, everything got to go right in football. If you play offense, you have 10 offensive teammates. Yeah. But the defense is also your teammate. In football, you got 20 Two teammates. Absolutely. And you're relying on all everybody. Two of them. Because you can be the, the greatest quarterback and you can score five touchdowns, have 38 points or whatever. But if your defense is playing horrible and y'all give 44, you know what they're going to say. That quarterback may have less statistics than you, but they're going to say, in these times, they're going to say, he beat him. Yeah. Well, how did he beat him when he played better? And his twenty two teammates plays his twenty one teammates plays worse than his twenty one teammates. Yes. So in football, that is the hardest sport to really be successful in because you're relying on twenty one other guys to do their job. Yes. And the more people you rely on to do your job, that's to do their job, that's the more you are relying upon your teammates. So when they talk about Patrick Mahomes and all that, just remember when you watch the games, because I saw Kansas City, all I hear is Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes. Absolutely. Well, but I had a reason, but the whole team, though. For good reason. Yeah. But I saw Kansas City actually win the Super Bowl with defense. I mean, he kept all the job. I mean, he did his job. I mean, I'm, especially in the AFC game. Yeah. 17 to 10. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. and, and you got your, you got to score right at the end to help you seal it. So, you know, we got to back off of this. He did this. He 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 went to the fouls this many times. No, his team went to the fouls. Yeah. He the one and lost as a team. And this is just my opinion. We give too much individual credit to uh, to people that are involved in team sports. Yep. And people say Noah Lyle say woe is me. He can say that because it is him. Absolutely. And Lord now and Lord now he's not the up. He has no teammates. Yeah. So when he won that hundred meter. Whoa, it was him. Uh, and when he lost the 200, whoa, it was him. Yeah. Nobody else because he's the one and only. Yeah. You know, and I tell all these people, if you really want to be called a goat, go go run track, play tennis. Yeah, play go golf. Off, yeah. Be an individual. Yeah. But don't give me a goat in team sports. That's just my opinion. Hey. I'm off of my soapbox. Now. Yeah. I love it. I love it. There is no goat in sports. Good team sports. Team sports. Yeah. Team sport. yeah. Oh, man. In my opinion, the main course is overrated. I'm all about them sides, dog. I need you to throw down on the mashed potatoes or something. I need that cabbage hidden right. Hey, I need some uh, okra and tomatoes on the menu, please. You know, black-eyed peas, greens, collard greens. Now you're talking to them. It's cornbread. Oh, cornbread, you that's know. That's his opinion. Let me do <laughs> Hey, you can tell me. Because you know the tongue back. I need you to go a little hard on them sides, man. You know, I know KFC got the original recipe on that chicken. But them sides ain't ever hit right, you know. I don't really eat their chicken neither. <laughs> I'm just sad. I need more focus on them sides. That's for my restaurants. That's for my fast food locations. I need some better sides, right? I, I'm tired of having the option of French fries, tater tots, uh, mashed potatoes. 
corn, green beans. I need you to go hard on them sides, man. In my opinion, we need to go hard on them sides. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I got to say. And the main course is overrated, man. <laughs> I'm mixing. The main course is overrated, man. That's all I'm saying. Hey, next week, hey, we was going to do it this week. Matter of fact, we might come back at you in a little bit, y'all. But uh, anyways, appreciate y'all tuning in, man, this week. We're going to be back for show sometime Wednesday. Next Wednesday. But keep, your, but keep your eyes open yeah. and your ears listening yeah. for a watch party. For a watch party, man, because you know Floyd Mayweather Jr. fight this weekend. Yeah, oh. Oh yeah, he's going to go hard. Floyd, Floyd Mayweather don't want to go too hard on John Gotti. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and we and we got the NCAA cracking. Oh yeah, the NCAA jumping off. WNBA still jumping off. So jumping off. hey, and then we got one more week. Pop up. Why the N L to the A. to the NFL, baby. The NFL to the NFL. Hey, yeah. we will pick. Four lucky contestants, four lucky subscribers to join us in the Fantasy Football League this year. Actually, three, because we already know Trip the Ghost got one. Shout out Trip the Ghost, man. That's that guy right there, making sure we on point. But uh, appreciate y'all joining us this week, man. We're going to keep this thing rocking. We'll see you sometime next Wednesday, sometime around noonish. All right, we out. Peace. Welcome to a realm where the pulse of sports thrills and the spark of technology sizzles. Join Ronald Unk Bolware and your charismatic host, Jay, a- a.k.a. Jonathan Anderson. Together, they unpack the latest in sports and technology. This is Noonish Sports and Tech.